hello everyone and welcome back to my channel today for day five of this film ride challenge as you guessed it we're going to talk about this gun for hire released in 1942 with alan ladd and veronica lake and it is a movie that in my opinion has great historical importance due to the fact again that it was released in 1942 therefore being one of the first examples of the genre and featuring a film couple that is often i think a bit overlooked they were tiny yes but they were of astronomical stardom proportions the political context when this movie was filmed was a hard one as the u.s would enter world war ii during its production the international conflict had definitely an impact on the genre as we've established in previous videos therefore the merit of this movie is using some of the genre's most characteristic elements ahead of some of its leading exponents it seemed in that period that moral values had been shattered justice law enforcement politics police representatives were starting to be hugely questioned. In the 30s gangster movies and also in other genres such as the Western, the binary distinction of right and wrong, good and evil was certainly clearer and much more evident than in film noir films. It seems as though, especially during the 40s, those lines were blurred for good. The results of all those contradictions were new characters, new roles that audiences had never seen before. Those heroes turned into anti-heroes, morally ambiguous, cynical, and much more human than their predecessors. Lake and Lat's characters are perfect examples of this new set of roles that were available for actors and actresses at that time. This gun for hire was the epic start of Alan Ladd's career. This was undoubtedly the movie that made Alan Ladd. Who trusts anybody? You couldn't very well complain to the police, could you? I'm my own police. What would you do? First I'd find out who you're stooging for. And I'd give him what I gave Baker. Don't I? I can't stand violence. And I'd put off a little of that blood. Prior to that, as I explained in a video called Five Different Things That You Probably Don't Know About Alan Ladd, he had struggled a lot in order to become a professional actor and have a career as a Hollywood actor. It was not until he married Sue Carroll and she became his agent that his luck changed. She pushed for him being cast as Philip Raven in this gun for hire and that was the best thing that could have ever happened to Alan Ladd who I don't think had much confidence in his talents and again quite struggled before to have prominent parts in movies. It was Paramount, the studio that produced this gun for hire and where he ultimately achieved international stardom and it was also his pairing with Veronica Lake that also turned him into an instant star. I mean the impact this movie had was huge, that of overnight stardom for Ladd. This is eminently Ladd's movie although Veronica Lake plays a huge part of the success of this movie and as I said also in previous videos chemistry between actors is an instant formula for success. Veronica Lake in turn was already well known and famous for her parts especially in I Wanted Wings and films like Sullivan's travels and you can see that when you watch this gun for hire because she has top billing and also does robert preston who plays a policeman veronica lake's boyfriend no one expected lad's epic rise to fame it caught everyone by surprise i think if you're not an alan ladd fan or if you're not that familiar with his work i truly recommend that you watch this gun for hire because what he does with his part here the type of character he represents is very unique 
to film noir. He plays a hitman, a supposedly ruthless character, but who has been in the past beaten and mistreated by his mother, who also has love for cats. Some of the best scenes aside from those between Lat and Lake are those between Lat and cats. Aside also from epic action sequences but again he plays a character that unlike again the gangsters that audiences saw in the 30s he is handsome he is ruthless yet he has sensitivity fragility cynicism but yet a yearn for a better life and that's quite obvious also because of his scenes with Veronica Lake, who in here, the graceful nightclub singer slash magician here. So she does all the tricks and she also helps us see Philip Raven in a different light. The movie invariably again was based on a novel. In this case, it was a novel called This Gun for Sale, written by Graham Greene, and the story was adapted as a screenplay by Albert Maltz and none other than W.R. Burnett, who wrote in turn High Sierra and Little Caesar. So again, we have an epic writing team for this gun for hire and it shows. The movie in this case was directed by a relatively forgotten director called Frank Tuttle who was a veteran who had started his career in silent movies who stopped working in films because he was blacklisted and with the help of cinematographer John F. Seitz they created another case of noir magic. John Seitz would go on to work in films like Double Indemnity and Sunset Boulevard. So I think we can safely say that he was one of the best cinematographers of the genre. And particularly in this Gun for Hire, again, if you try to savor the movie, you'll see many elements, many lighting elements that will make your jaw drop. The story of Philip Raven is that of an outsider an outcast who ends up being a hitman. Alan Ladd, again who plays Philip Raven, is hired to kill a chemist and blackmailer and retrieve a chemical formula for Willard Bates, played wonderfully by Laird Craigar, who pays him in counterfeit money and then reports them to the Los Angeles police as stolen money. Subsequently, the police goes after Raven and Detective Lieutenant Michael Crane, played by Robert Preston, who is in turn Veronica Lakes, is obviously assigned to the case. Alan Ladd finds out about this and swears revenge. And that is the premise, the starting point of this gun for hire. Again, as always, I'm not going to say much more about the plot, but this movie is filled with action and again with great scenes with Alan Ladd, Veronica Lake. I really love Robert Preston, but I think that here he is misused, I'd say. I think he was in his best when he played the villain, such as in Blood on the Moon or in other characters like Victor Victoria. I truly love Robert Preston in Victor Victoria, but if you haven't seen This Gun for Hire is again another film noir classic that you can't miss in my opinion. So that's all I have for you for today's video. I hope as always that you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for sharing the love for classic movies. Thank you so much for joining me in this film noir challenge. As always, stay safe, take care, and see you all in my next video. Bye.